The highly anticipated MetaQuest 3 exclusive Batman Arkham Shadow is right around the corner. And yes, you've seen the title, guys. I, Antone, from the small growing channel Escape Portal, got to play it early. A couple weeks ago, I posted a video titled The Batman Arkham Shadow Experiment that happened to catch the attention of a very particular individual. I felt compelled to make the video after obsessively watching every single piece of content about the game on the internet. Of course, my obsession coming from the fact that this game broke into the mainstream in a way that we haven't seen since Half-Life Alex. So I couldn't help it. I had to watch the story unfold because of course we always want to see VR get that credibility in the eyes of mainstream gaming. Plus, after recently replaying Iron Man VR and actually finishing it this time, I was a huge believer in camouflage. As VR gamers, we all know that the media has never really given us a fair shake, which of course in many ways translates to all the traditional gamers out there and why they seem to be clueless about what VR is and where it's at today. So every time we have an opportunity like this to show mainstream gaming what modern VR gaming is all about, we have an opportunity to change the perspective, even if it's only a little out of time. I believe at some point, it will cause a domino effect and result in a level of respect for VR, and over time, it will end that resistance that some have towards it. As far as Arkham Shadow goes, the shift in perspective really began when the studio head of Camouflage, Ryan Payton, and his team had the risky but brilliant strategy to go straight into the fire, straight to the community that was absolutely furious, and began to show the passion that they had for the Arkham franchise. And from there, it eventually kind of snowballed into an avalanche of positivity from the very community that initially tore it apart. And now it appears that a decent amount of that community is going to be joining ours. The vast majority of the Arkham community has never even tried VR before, which means we're going to get a whole lot of people that are completely blown away with VR and fall into the same level of passion that we all have. Of course, we all know that VR is not for everyone, but it also is for a lot of people, and they won't know if it's for them until they have a reason to come try it. And this game is that reason for a lot of these people. That's just a brief summary of what the video is about. If you have not seen it, I really recommend checking it out because it's part of the Arkham Shadow story and nobody else seems to be talking about it. Anyways, a few days after I posted the video, I woke up to a DM from Ryan Payton himself, thanking me for my video and complimenting the quality of it. I was shocked, not gonna lie. I'm a huge fan of Ryan Payton and the way he's been handling this entire thing. So of course I was honored to be getting praise from someone that I have a great deal of respect for. After a few days of going back and forth over DMs, Ryan ended up offering me an opportunity to play the Arkham Shadow demo that all of the big content creators got to try. And luckily for me, it just so happens that I'm about two and a half hours from Meta's Reality Labs in Burlingame, just outside of San Francisco. So of course, a new and up and coming guy like myself felt honored to take the trip, especially considering this wasn't even some influencer event. Ryan went out of his way to set this up for me personally. And so because of that, I want to thank Ryan Payton and the team for this opportunity. And of course, I want to thank Steve for marketing. We couldn't have done this without you. Of course, opportunity or not, it would never sway my opinions. I know I don't have to say this, but I just want to make sure it's very clear that these studios want us to be honest. If our credibility comes into question, then we won't even have anything to offer them anyways because we won't have an audience. Not to mention, Camouflage is a top tier studio that actually wants that constructive feedback from the community so they can continue to grow and improve. And we'll get into some of that stuff towards the end of the video. But anyways, let's get into it. I had a few questions going into the demo that were answered, a few things that I found to be nice surprises, and a few things that I would like to request that would definitely make a lot of people happy. First off, I do want to state that I've never actually played an Arkham game all the way through. I've checked them out, but that's it. But in the build-up to this, I've done my homework and made sure that I know all the things that make the Arkham franchise loved by so many. But of course, I'm a VR guy. I am coming from the perspective of a VR gamer who just loves great games and is always on the hunt for the greatest VR games of all time. And did this game have that level of potential? Is this at least going to be one of the greatest quest games of all time? While the potential is definitely there, of course it's next to impossible to answer considering the demo was roughly 30 to 40 minutes long. And by the time I really started to get a hang of the controls and mechanics, the demo was over, making me starving for more. Which of course should tell you that yes, the demo was awesome. It was honestly everything that I was hoping it would be and more. Right off the bat, the biggest question that I had was about graphical fidelity. We knew that the game's frame rate was running at a native 72 hertz, but they did not say much about render resolution. So my first question was how sharp is this game going to be? It was no secret that this game is being talked about as one of the best looking quest games of all time. I heard a lot of people comparing it to Red Matter 2. And if you've ever played that on the Quest 3, it's the very first game that I played on standalone hardware that makes me feel like I'm plugged into a PC. And with that comparison in mind, as soon as I turned on the headset, I was both slightly disappointed and actually very happy with what I seen. Let's get the slight disappointment out of the way first, and that is that no, this game is not as sharp as Red Matter 2. But the reality is, what game is? Now before you get upset, let me just say, the game was definitely sharp enough to make me happy with it. I just think that when you compare a game to Red Matter 2, it sets the game up for certain expectations, so I just want to be clear that no, this game is not 
as sharp as Red Matter 2, but the resolution is still really good, especially for close-up objects. The thing that did surprise me about the visuals is that the graphics themselves did look like they earned the title of Quest 3 exclusive. The world is very gritty and detailed, a lot less clean than something like Red Matter 2, so it's a weird one to compare, but in terms of the graphics themselves, I do understand the comparisons. It is one of the better looking Quest games I've seen. I do think that it's up there with Red Matter 2, I just think it's up there in a different way. And we also can't forget that there's a huge contrast in the pacing between the two games, which when you think about it, makes this game even more impressive. Again, this is an older demo build. There is a huge possibility that they improve some of the long distance textures before launch. And if they were able to sharpen it up, then I would say it's probably the best looking quest game out there. I think a good way to compare it is comparing Red Matter 2 on PlayStation VR 2 to Resident Evil 4 or Village. The graphics are clearly better in the AAA games, but the graphics are still great in Red Matter 2, but they're just a lot sharper. So in some ways it looks better. I feel like that's kind of what we have here. The game had a great atmosphere. You could tell you were in a superhero world. You could also totally feel that you were Batman and of course the real-time shadows would never let you forget it because like you've probably heard before when there's a light behind you it will cast your shadow constantly reminding you that you are Batman. Speaking of the environment I did find some secret areas, hidden collectibles, and a few easter eggs that I'm sure Arkham fans are gonna love. To nobody's surprise I found the voice acting to be really well done though I have to admit that I haven't seen any cutscenes yet because they didn't want to spoil anything for the demo but I did run into some NPCs, I had Alfred in my ear, and of course I heard Roger Craig Greg Smith as Batman. From what I experienced, this game is going to have top-notch voice acting, which of course should surprise nobody considering the history of these voice actors. But let's get into the juicy stuff, and that of course is the gameplay itself the movement, the predator sections, and of course, the combat. I'm gonna save the combat for last because I do believe camouflage may have just done something to affect VR forever. But I wanna start with the movement. I'm actually even happier about the traversal than I expected to be, and I expected it to be good just by watching the B-roll and the trailers. The hook shot was incredibly smooth and quick. There was no like physics-based jank or anything like that. It was relatively arcadey and painless, if that makes sense. One of the coolest features in the entire game is the gliding mechanic. The gliding felt perfect, and it did kind of remind me of the flying and Iron Man, it felt just as smooth as that and I loved the way that it was done. You literally reach back and grab the cape with the triggers and pull it in front of you to initiate the glide. I did initially wonder why they went with the triggers. I think most players will expect to use the grip, but then I thought maybe it was to prevent the possibility of grabbing an item off your belt instead of the cape itself. In any case, I was fine with it. For some reason, I kept letting go, thinking I would continue to glide and I would just fall straight to the ground because there's no cape to hold on to when you let go. You actually have to hold on to it the whole glide down, which of course makes sense when you think about it. I think the biggest surprise for me was how good it felt to slide through vents. I found myself doing it constantly because it was so fun. Not to mention, I did also like how good it felt to drop in and out of grates. It was a unique experience being able to just pop in and out of the ground like that, even if the controls did take a second to get used to. Even though Camouflage knows that they're going to be bringing in a lot of new VR users, they also know that they're selling to the VR base first. And of course, the VR community does not get motion sick. We want to be able to glide and zip around in ways that feel freeing, rather than restricting the movement and nerfing it for new players. And I'm happy to report that they nailed that aspect of it. This game does not feel like some held back version of a flat game. This is the Arkham experience just in VR. And that alone should get praised because we know that doesn't always happen when these big franchises come over. Many of them are too afraid to do what needs to be done. And that is definitely not the case here. One thing I was not expecting to be as fun as it was are the predator sections. I actually found it very fun to lurk in high places and slowly pick off your targets one by one. And then in the case of an ambush, using a smoke bomb to blind them and zip right up to a gargoyle to get completely out of sight. I love that this game constantly gives you options because if you're feeling a firefight, you could glide right back down and glide kick an enemy in the face and begin that free flow combat. But simply sneaking up behind the enemies to take care of them in the stealthiest way possible was a lot more fun than I initially gave it credit for, especially when using the grates. In fact, using the grates to hide underground with the ability to stealth take down at any moment is something that I've never experienced in VR before and I think they implemented it very well. Okay, now let's get into some of the gadgets I got to use and the combat. The first one, I'm not really sure about. It could have been a precursor or an Easter egg for what is to come, but I think I might have accidentally set off the shot gloves a couple times because my hands were going going haywire, buzzing with electricity. It was a shame too, because every time I set them off, there just so happened to be no enemies around and I wasted them, or at least I think I did. Unfortunately, when I asked about the shot gloves, I was denied any extra information on them. I'm assuming that means that we're gonna be getting more information on them very soon, or we might have to find out when the game is actually in our hands. The explosive gel launcher was actually so much fun to use. 
To be honest, the thing that I love the most about it is that it wasn't overpowered. It has a very short range, so if you want to use it during combat, you actually have to step in the fire, which I think is a very balanced approach. Of course, it's fun to use on walls and barricades, but I actually liked using it against enemies the most so far. The Batarang was very simple, but also very intuitive. You just grab it off your chest and chuck it in the direction of an enemy or a target, and it comes right back to your chest plate. I also believe that a lot of these things are upgradable. I'm pretty sure I heard something about Batarang buffs to where you could actually hit multiple enemies at a time, which is going to be really nice. There was another gadget that I didn't really have time to figure out, but the one tool that isn't a tool that I actually did find to be incredibly useful is the cape itself. The thing is freaking huge, has a ton of range, and can daze enemies in combat, which really buys you a lot of time when there's a lot of bad guys around. And speaking of the free flow combat, let's get into it. I saved this for last for a reason, and that's because Camouflage just did something groundbreaking that I don't see anybody talking about. I had these thoughts based on what I've been seeing, and now that I've played it, I'm 100% certain that this is the case. And that, of course, is the fact that with the debut of this game is also the birth of an entirely new genre of melee combat in VR. Something never seen or done before that opens the door for entirely new genres of games. Which is very fitting because the Arkham franchise created free flow combat in the realm of traditional flat gaming that went on to spark entire generations of fighting games that adopted the same kind of combat but each with their own unique takes. I want you to think about this real quick. The real problem with the Spider-Man VR game would not be the swinging around. We see that in VR all of the time. The hard part would be trying to translate that combat system into VR. And now with this blueprint and a little bit of innovation, I can see how a developer could actually pull it off. Another good example is a hypothetical built from the ground up Dragon Ball VR game, which of course is like a dream of mine. In the same way that you could fight multiple enemies in Arkham Shadow, I could see you doing the same thing against Cybermen or Cell Juniors. You could also switch into different types of attacks midair and even use attacks like the rocket punch from Iron Man. Of course, there would have to be a lot more innovation to add in all of the extra abilities in a game like Dragon Ball, but the whole time dilation thing makes so much sense for characters who are very powerful because they're fighting at a different speed than the rest of the world. I just love this combat system because it didn't feel written or choreographed. At any moment, I could use a gadget, I could punch a different enemy. I also loved that the whole game turned the way that you punched. So if you punch behind you, you are facing that way now. I could bring an enemy to me with my grappling gun, I could use my battering or explosive gel. The more I got the hang of the combat, the more I realized how many unique combinations that I could do with some creativity and a little bit more practice. As much as I loved the movement, the real star of the show was truly that a new form of combat in VR has been born, and it's practically unanimous across the board that it feels incredible. I'm sure I'll have much more to say on this topic when I get to sink my teeth into the entire game, but overall, I was impressed. Now let me get into a couple things that I would like to see improved. Of course, I ran into a couple glitches and bugs, but those aren't things that need improved, they're well aware of those things, and they should be ironed out by the time we get the game. The first thing that I noticed when I entered the game and started running was these HUD-like speed lines to convey speed. And I know for a fact that many people are going to want to turn that off, and as of right now, they don't have an option to do so. Another thing that I know people are going to find a little bit disappointing is the forced vignetting during things like vaulting. Now don't get me wrong, they have comfort options in the settings, but even on the VR Expert setting, which is the highest setting that they have, there are still some moments in the game that force you to have some mild vignetting or tunneling, and I know people are going to want that option to just turn it off. Those two things are very easy to fix, and they're very minor problems. There was one more thing that I found a little bit disappointing at first, and that was the lack of interactable items in the environment. But to be honest, for me personally, I certainly don't need stuff like that for a game to be good in VR. Now don't get me wrong, there's definitely some stuff to play around with, but when I seen a chair and tried to grab it, I couldn't move it or anything like that. It was glued to the ground. But that's also because because this is not some bone lab type physics simulator. This is a video game, guys. This is a game with objectives and combat and production value and story. This is not a simulation. This is all about the gameplay itself and not the extra VR elements that some people are so obsessed with. Don't get me wrong, I love that stuff too, but it doesn't need to be in every game in my opinion. After a while, I realized it didn't really fit with this style of game anyways. Of course, I would also like to see some long distance textures sharpened up, just to make it that much better, but it's not necessary. It's already one of the best looking standalone games that you can play. And that was really it. The complaints that I had were very minor. Now, despite the fact that I was pretty blown away by this experience, there is still so much more that remains to be seen. I definitely don't want to jump the gun and already 
claim that this is the game of the year. We have so many other VR games coming out in the next few months like Metro, Alien, Wanderer, and of course Skydance's Behemoth, and they all have that same level of potential. Not to mention what I think is going to be the sleeper of the year, and that's Arcane Age. VR is absolutely stacked right now, and I really do believe that this is going to be the new normal for VR gaming. But overall, I'm very happy and impressed with what I've seen. And if you were looking forward to this game, I think you're going to be really happy with what we are getting. All the demo really did was make me starving for more, because like I said in the beginning, I was just getting all of the controls to feel like second nature when it was over. The last thing I want to say before I go is thank you to my subscribers. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know my channel was doing really well for a new creator, especially one that's focused on VR until YouTube terminated my channel. It seemed like every video that I posted got into the algorithm to some degree, and after three months of trying to prove my innocence to YouTube, I finally got my channel back. But unfortunately, it seems that there's still some kind of residual effect on my account because my numbers have been incredibly low, and it's been a little bit disappointing. But this whole situation taught me something, and that's that it's not always important how many people are watching. Sometimes it's more important who is. If a guy like Ryan Payton would go out of his way to set this up for me, then I must be doing something right. Even though my numbers are down right now, I'm really not worried about my channel. I'm just going to keep doing what I do because I love to do this. And I know that with all of your support, eventually my channel will get right back on track. If any one of you happen to be considering prescription lenses for your headset, I've been extensively testing out the ones from VR Rock. They're widely known as some of the best lenses that you can buy, and after some testing, they have earned my stamp of approval. These are a game changer for glasses users. My wife even uses them and loves them, so if you are interested, I do have a 10% affiliate link down below. You don't have to use my link. I recommend them regardless. But if you are already interested and you want to support my channel, the link is down in the description. Anyways, it's time to wrap up the video. It was a fun trip. It was an awesome demo. And of course, thanks again to Ryan, Camouflage, and Meta for having me. If you guys have any questions about Batman Arkham Shadow, write them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If you're new around here, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and I'll catch you guys next time.